when I was very small, my parents ran safaris um, in wilderness and remote parts of Africa. And I think I developed a passion and love for wilderness environments from a young age, which then led on to me training up in rock climbing, winning national competitions, and going on to compete in international adventure racing and um, ultimately becoming South Africa's first and currently only female mountain guide. Um, I also um, became uh, one of four women in the world to go through a very rigorous uh, British Special Forces selection and um, have worked on films and, uh, and stunts in various capacities. And um, I really enjoy speaking to corporate audiences now about my experiences and sharing with them. A lot of people think mountain guiding is going around and taking people up mountains and showing them flowers and, and here's the view and, <laughs> um, and, and it isn't really. Uh, <clears throat> and it's quite strange because, you know, people will sign up to um, wanting to do something and then, um, you know, until they have the ropes and everything else. And then when they actually get to, say, the cliff face, they'll go, well, actually, this isn't really what we were intending. And you think, well, what were you thinking? <laughs> Um, so, um, mountain guide is effectively leading people up uh, mountainous and uh, dangerous terrain um, if, uh, safely and effectively so that they're able to accomplish an end result and normally the end result is getting to the top of something or uh, achieving something that they wouldn't have been able to achieve and then the other part of the result is getting them off safely. What happened was, it's, it's normally, it's never one instant, it's a series of little things. And uh, we were slowed down by snow on the route, you know, but that was fine. We, we managed to overcome a number of small adversities along the way, which we would consider completely normal. And then right, right at the top of the street, the last vertical 20 metres or so, there was a wall of ice. Uh, it's essentially, it's um, a sheer rock face which had become verglast, which means there's a very thin layer of ice on the rock. And it was completely impenetrable. So had we had ice axes and crampons, it would have been impossible to climb. And we were there with summer rock boots anyway. So we realised at that point we had to abseil off and we weren't able to make the summit and go over the top. And <clears throat> just as we're setting up our ropes for abseil, there's a huge crash of thunder and the whole sky just lights up with this pink lightning everywhere. And we just knew we were now in for a really, really frightening experience. And the lightning was so close, you know, the, the, the electricity in the atmosphere was so intense that it literally charged our head torches, our hair was standing up on end, we had a humming sound in our head, our uh, um, uh, waterproof over trousers, had static coming out of them, and every minute we were thinking we're not going to survive more than another couple of minutes, we're not going to get through this. And it's when you're in those very tight situations where you think that everything depends on this, but you, it's going to be lost any minute now anyway, that it's so easy to panic, it's so easy to then just um, go into a, 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 a flight, you know, a fight or flight scenario. And it's at those times when you have to calm yourself down, calm your mind down, and then place yourself into a situation where you consider just everything in order and go exactly according to the way you've been taught. Use a very high level of self-discipline to just see you through. And I think through um, our training and working together as a team and using that very high level of discipline, we were able to get ourselves into a position of refuge and shelter. Again, it was, it was due to knowledge and experience that we realised when to stop, when to actually then build a shelter and dig in. Um, and then, again, thankfully due to experience, and, uh, you know, it's unfortunate, but you when you've spent a life doing extreme sports you'll know a number of friends who didn't make it and always you ask the question why what was the reason and so often if it's cold it's due to hypothermia it's due to landing in a situation like this and then just curling up in a ball having a break and so we knew we couldn't take that break we had to keep going and creating strategies 
creating strategies for survival, so important. To lead successfully, you need to have honesty and integrity and you need to build up trust within your team. People have to trust you and trust in your decision-making process. If there's doubt in their mind, that will become so visible in the way they interact with other team members, in the way they approach things which may be a challenge. Communication is part of building that trust. Leaving people in the dark means they feel unnerved and they feel that there's something that they maybe should know and they don't know and their mind starts to go into overdrive. So having clear and effective communication. Um, for me, it's about stating things just precisely and accurately and as they are. And I guess on a mountain um, or in a wilderness environment, you don't really have time to play games. So it's about actually this is the way it is, this is what we're doing and um, we're going to do this together and get through it like this and if this happens that will be the result. It's not mincing your words. I come from a climbing background and I got into speaking a number of years ago and I found to begin with um, I was intrigued by why it was that CEOs and leadership teams were so interested in hearing what I had to say about risk, what I had to offer them in terms of my experience. And it took me a while to actually then turn it around on its head because ultimately um, I wanted to be able to enable those people who come to me to, to hear me speak, to give them something to take away. And it's not something tangible that they can see. It's not something they can physically carry with them, but they can take it in their minds. And I found that that uh, understanding of risk, of calculated risk, of um, feeling confident in taking risks at an extreme level and how you go about that and how your brain processes those thoughts, which are all things I've had a lot of time to think about when I've been sat on the top of a cliff face somewhere, was of uh, quite a lot of interest and importance to people in senior positions in companies and to enable them to then take those ideas forward to take on their own challenges in risky environments. I think goal setting is really um, at the pinpoint of the success because without those goals you're not going to um, be able to see, succeed in very much. Uh, goal setting has to be accurate though, you know, so you, I think setting the right goals for the right team, having something lofty and ideal is very important, but having achievable steps along the way, which are also goals in themselves and immeasurable. And part of that becomes an acknowledgement of successes along the way. So goal setting really important on a big level, macro scale, but also really important on a micro scale as well. And appreciating every step, you know, looking down to um, feel a great sense of accomplishment in what you've already done. I've always had this um, real love for speaking, for being able to engage with people and to share with them. And I've always thought, you know, if, there's, if I could just get in touch and, uh, you know, I, I feel that this is something I could do. And then it was quite strange because I started climbing, I started working on film sets, doing stunts and doing other bits and pieces. And, um, and then slowly I, I realised it all came together because my life and unusual background and experiences and the climbing side actually did have some really important relevance in terms of teamwork, in terms of leadership, in terms of risk taking, in terms of overcoming great adversities in um, very uh, remote or dangerous or unusual situations. And uh, I realised that this was something I could share, that people wanted to hear and that actually made a difference in their lives. And at first it was a bit of a tentative move, you know, because I, I couldn't quite gather what it was. And it was really through people coming up to me afterwards and then saying how this had moved them or how to change their lives. And 
I, I, it gave me great pleasure to actually give something to someone else, to have them maybe a year later write to you and say, do you know that, that, that this that you said, and it could be one point, has changed my life in this and this way. And for me, if I can do something to inspire or motivate or give someone just a little something that they can take with them and use in their life, even years and years in the future, that's a huge, huge inspiration for me to be able to do that for other people. I think something that I always keep in my mind is that phrase by Darwin when he said, it's not the most intelligent nor the fittest that survive, but those that are best adapt to change. And so by keeping your eyes open and enabling yourself to be flexible to change and then driving 100% for what you want, that's, um, that's probably one of the the key messages that I like to be able to share with people, being able to be flexible, but also very, very focused. For me, it's about taking people on a journey. It's getting them to come with me, getting them to be on a mountain with me, getting them to feel the cold, getting them to feel the strain, getting them to be in this isolated environment, uh, getting them to feel camaraderie of someone working with them, alongside them. And I think um, it's difficult really to encapsulate exactly how I do that, except I can see because I engage with the audience and some of them shiver <laughs> and some of them cry and some of them laugh. And, and that's wonderful to know that you've actually got these people and you're taking them on a journey. Um, I see things in very vivid pictures and I like to paint those pictures for people. And I think also I, I feel things, so um, I like to explain how it is to be in that environment and perhaps the words that I use they won't remember every single word but they'll have an understanding or a feeling for it and um, I just feel very pleased to have that ability to be able to do that for people.